As we've discussed, one of the most essential tools in framing a house or framing a shed is the miter saw. So today we're going to talk a look at the parts of the miter saw and how a miter saw can be used safely to cut wood. As always, safety is our number one priority. Remember, ask questions if you're unsure. Remember, no running or fooling around in the shop. Clean up after your work area and report any injuries or problems. Now you might hear chop saw and miter saw but they are different. Can you guess what the differences are? The chop saw is being used to cut metal. It uses an abrasive wheel to cut through the metal that you're trying to cut, as opposed to a miter saw, which is used for cutting wood and cutting angles in wood, hence the name miter. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the miter saw and how it's used. Next time you're at a big box store or a hardware store, go over to the saw section and take a look at some of the different saws that they have to choose from. You'll see some of the differences in sizes and prices. This slide shows you you have a couple different types of miter saws to choose from. First, we have a regular miter saw right here. And in this miter saw, you can see that the table can rock back and forth and the saw can go up and down. That's about it. Next to it, we have the sliding compound miter saw, which is a little bit more detailed in the fact that it has a little slider, which allows you for a longer depth of cut. It also has the bevel where you can go ahead and make your angle. And then also back here, there's a little handle that you can turn so that you can rotate the angle of the saw and make some compound bevels. Another thing you'll have to choose from is the size blade that you'll use for your compound miter saw or your regular miter saw. You can use a 10 inch blade or a 12 inch blade. Depending on what kind of job you decide to do will depend on which type of miter saw you buy. The one that I have at home is a regular miter saw and the one I have in the shop is a compound sliding miter saw which is used to cut some larger pieces of wood. Next, we're going to be taking a look at some of the parts of a sliding compound miter saw, the one we have in the shop. Some of the important parts for you to remember on your sliding compound miter saw is the table. What you're going to be doing is putting your piece of wood right here on the table. You have your scale, which will identify for you the different angles that you can cut, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 30 degrees, and usually zero degrees when you're making a nice straight cut. You also have your miter adjustment. There's a little handle there that you'll squeeze and allows you to move the angle back and forth. You have your fence. The fence has some holes if you wanted to mount a scrap piece of wood there. You always want to make sure a piece of wood is against the fence. You have your blade guard, which is going to protect your hands um, from the blade. Always make sure you use a saw with a blade guard. And you also have the handle here and the switch, which you will press, and that will cause the blade to spin. Some other uh, features of this saw, there's a little dust port where the dust will go flying out and you also have your little slider which will allow the saw to slide in and out depending on what size piece of wood you have to cut. When using the saw, you want to make sure that you keep your hands away from the blade as much as possible, as far as possible, because when this blade starts going, it goes very fast and becomes very, very dangerous. So some of the cuts that you can make on your miter saw, first is a cross cut, which is probably your most common cut on the saw, just straight through your piece of wood. That's called a cross cut. You're cutting across the grain of the wood. Next is your miter cut, which is good if you're cutting out picture frames. You also, with a more advanced saw, you can use a bevel cut. And then with a compound sliding miter saw, you can do a compound cut where you combine both the bevel cut and the miter cut into one cut. Most common cut, though, is probably going to be your cross cut and your miter cut. Again, it's important to remember that you're always cutting against the grain. What makes the miter saw so versatile is the different angles that you can cut. Most of the angles you'll cut will be zero degrees. That's probably the most common cut you're going to make. But as I said, on the sliding compound miter saw and other miter saws, you'll have little notches where you can leave the blade and engage in different angles most common being 45 and zero. As you can see over here on the side, using some different angles can allow you to create some pretty creative things. So knowing which angle to use is pretty important. Before making the cut, it's important to measure twice and then cut. Make sure that you use a layout mark, a line that you will mark on your board to the correct distance of your cut. Remember, with a miter saw, we are cutting against the grain. 
You also want to make sure that you cut on the right side of the line. So I always like to put a little X on the board to make sure I know where I'm going to cut. When you're ready to make your cut, make sure you push your board in against the fence. Before you turn the saw on, make sure you bring the blade down. Make sure the blade lines up right next to the layout mark that you're going to cut. Bring the blade back up, turn the blade on, and bring your blade nice and slow through the piece of wood, um, cutting right across that line, making your cut. Remember, you can always go back and cut more off, but you can't glue sawdust back on a piece of wood. Another reason why it's important to make an accurate cut is what's called the kerf. You notice all that sawdust that comes out when you're making your cut? Well, here's the cross-section of your saw blade. And when that saw blade cuts through the wood, it actually removes material. And the material that it's removed is called the kerf. And depending on how thick the blade is will depend on how thick the kerf is on your piece of wood. Both saw blades are about an eighth inch thick, so you'll have an eighth inch kerf, which means an eighth inch of material will be removed from every cut that you make. So make sure you cut accurately and make sure you cut correctly. When using your chop saw, it's important to have eyeglasses and also be careful of your hands. Have one hand on the switch and the handle and have the other hand about a hand's length away from the blade. As with any new tool, it's important to read the manual and make sure you understand all of the ins and outs of your machine. Next, do a dry run. What do I mean by that? Is take the piece of wood, have the blade go up and down, and make sure you're making the correct cut before you turn the machine on. And also ask yourself, is this the correct tool for the job? Remember, a miter saw is being used to cut against the grain, not for anything else. Lastly, be careful of hand placement. Make sure your hands are far enough from the blade and make sure your arm or anything else isn't in the way when you cut the blade. Make sure you're comfortable in your cutting position. And lastly, as always, make sure you got safety glasses on and even hearing protection if you're outside or in a shop environment. But be safe. After your piece of wood is lined up to the correct placement for the blade, Turn the saw on. As you turn the saw on, make sure the blade is at full speed before you make the cut through the piece of wood. When cutting, use a firm, steady push motion when you go ahead and cut through the piece of wood. Don't go too fast, but also don't go too slow. When you go all the way through your piece of wood, wait for the blade to stop completely before lifting the handle and removing the work piece. That's super important, especially if you're cutting little pieces of wood because you don't want the wood to go flying out and hit you in the face or the head or your head. I've seen it happen before. It can be dangerous. As I said, safety, super important. So remember, if you're not sure, ask questions. Remember, no running around or fooling around. Make sure you clean up your work area. And if you see any injuries, make sure you report them. It's one thing for me to show you static pictures and talk about using a miter saw. The best thing to do is to use one yourself. We have a couple of videos that we're going to take a look at that will show you how to safely use them um, in a shop. So watch those, listen to some of the safety tips and important techniques that they use to use a chop saw safely. In this video, my goal was to show you the main parts of a miter saw and to show you how you can use a miter saw safely to cut wood. Thanks for watching.